Nikki Chewbacca, I want to share this story with you, and I want to get your thoughts on it. No problem, Kelly Chewbacca. All right. <laughs> so last Wednesday, the Texas Senate Committee on State Affairs held this crucial hearing on maintaining election security, featuring explosive testimony from Google whistleblower Zach Voorhees, Ryan Hartwig, a Facebook whistleblower, and Dr. Robert Epstein and Dan Schneider, who's the vice president of the Media Research Center. In a shocking revelation, Voorhees, who's a former Google engineer, he developed a and delivered a bombshell testimony shedding light on Google's alleged efforts to interfere with elections and maintain a biased information landscape. Voorhees exposed Google's secret machine learning fairness program. If you haven't heard of it, he claims it's aimed at programming the public to align with the tech giant's corporate values. This is what he said. Watch this video. Make no mistake. Machine learning fairness is and has always been the real censorship program, and it is massive. The goal was to, quote, program the public to align with Google's corporate values. Those are their words. Uh, this was a four-step process laid out by the AI ethicist Margaret Mitchell, who has since been fired for um, unethical behavior. Step one, training data are collected and classified. Step two, algorithms are programmed. Step three, media are filtered, ranked, aggregated, or generated. And step four, people like us are programmed. That's a direct quote from their slides. And it wasn't just in one slide, it was littered throughout the company. This process was repeated in a cycle, with step four feeding back into step one. This sounds like something out of a conspiracy theory, but it's real. Google rewrote their news algorithms, specifically trained on mainstream media stories targeting Trump, such as his fight with Comey. Systems like real-time events, real-time boost, and hive mind assign higher amplification scores to stories related to targeting Trump. Google's internal documents revealed their stance on, quote, algorithmic unfairness. So they stated that even factually accurate representations could be considered algorithmically unfair and removed. So let me just quote them, quote Google for a minute. For example, imagine a Google image query for CEOs shows predominantly men, which by the way, Mr. Chewbacca is true. I've been in those boardrooms. Even if it were a factually accurate representation of the world, it would be algorithmic unfairness. In some cases, it might even be appropriate to take no action if the system accurately reflects current reality. While in other cases, it may be desirable to consider how we might help society reach a more fair and equitable state via either product intervention or broader corporate social responsibility efforts, end quote. What that means is they would replace the pictures of all those men with pictures of diverse looking women to change what a boardroom looks like. For he has also alleged rampant censorship and bias. He's that said that Google is specifically targeting conservative news outlets. Whoa, shock. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but watch what he says here. Let's talk about news ranking. News sites that supported Democrats were ranked with the highest quality and trustworthiness. Here's a partial list. Wall Street Journal, 8.53. CBS News, 6.57. CNN, 6.0. Fox News 5.2, Russia Today 4.57, The Young Turks 2.53, Alex Jones Network negative 1.56. At the bottom of the list is Next News Network at negative 3.35. Let me reiterate, the foreign propaganda outlet Russia Today was scored seven points higher than the Next News Network one of the top YouTube news networks in America. Since my disclosure, Next News Network has been permanently demonetized and will soon be bankrupted. These sound more like the actions we'd expect from a Russian propaganda complex. But shockingly, it's the actions of Google. So according to Voorhees, who was invited to testify by the Heritage Foundation, Google employs blacklists, skewed search rankings, and algorithmic unfairness in order to suppress right-leaning content. So then Voorhees calls for a subpoena to uncover Google's clandestine operations, which has never happened before, including this machine learning fairness program, the blacklist, media ranking documents, and the decision process behind demonetizing Next News Network. 
When asked what recommendations would you have for the legislature to take action to address the issues you address, this is what he said. My recommendation is uh, subpoenas would be filed uh, against Google for any um, documents that have the name blacklist.txt related to Google, uh, YouTube, you. um, and their uh, news uh, search corpuses. Um, I would also ask that you subpoena um, their documents related to rankings of media outlets. Um, I've provided a supplemental uh, showing a slide deck including such a list um, that is four years old. It's a bit dated. Uh, the open question now is what are the updated rankings of the uh, media outlets that they have? Um, also, um, you know, machine learning fairness is so huge. I don't even know how you would even swallow that. But if you could do, like, you know, ask them, file a subpoena, ask them for documents related to machine learning fairness. And that is going to be such a huge bombshell that it just needs to get into the public disclosure. So it's those three things, machine learning fairness, blacklists, and uh, their media rankings is just is, is the start of the entire. Um, what might be a really cheap way to get at this information is to ask what the decision process was for demonetizing Next News Network, right? Like they're very large. And if you can get that information related to that case, I think that that's going to um, sort of illuminate what their decision making processes were for that demonetization. Like they're still demonetized. They've been demonetized for like six months, like the top conservative news network on YouTube. And the question is, why did they get demonetized? And if we have the answer to that, we're going to get the answers to a whole bunch of other like um, censorship activities with the company. And then right after that, Senator Brian Hughes took bold action and he ordered the subpoenas. So in response to shocking revelations from Google whistleblower Zach Voorhees, the Senate Committee on State Affairs unanimously voted to authorize subpoenas to big tech firms like Facebook and Google. But one of my favorite parts of the story is how Voorhees reacted because he made these disclosures clear as a whistleblower like many years ago, I want to say it was like five years ago, if you've been following this story, and nothing's happened. It's gotten a lot of media coverage, but otherwise no action's been taken. So check out this video of him on his Twitter account where he has his reaction to what the Texas legislature did. I just want to let you guys know that it's been five years of fighting, and I've got nothing but media to show for it until today. The Senate... The Texas Senate has finally taken legal action and authorized subpoenas, and I'm so happy. It's been five years, and now this has come out of nowhere, and I just hope and pray that other state senates will take up the call and investigate these big tech companies. You deserve a democracy and a representation and your vote, and these people are trying to subvert it and I couldn't live with myself knowing that this was happening. Thank you for everyone who's believed in me through the years. I feel like we're on the verge of something absolutely huge. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you so much. So Voorhees exposed Google's alleged bias and censorship, specifically targeting conservative news outlets like Next News Network, which has been demonetized for over six months as a result of what YouTube and Google have done. The mounting evidence presented in this hearing suggests that these tech giants impose their own biases to manipulate and stifle dissenting voices, undermining the very foundation of our democratic process. There seems to be a theme here. Senator Hughes and the committee made it clear, though, that Texas isn't going to stand for this, while this, these big tech giants threaten the integrity of our elections. It's time for big tech to answer for their actions and face consequences for their alleged election interference. I'm really proud of Texas and the stand that they took, and I really hope other states do the, the, do the same. As Texas continues its investigation into election security and the role of big tech, Voorhees' testimony has actually ignited a fierce debate around the need for transparency and accountability in the tech industry. Our integrity of elections is at stake, so it's crucial that the public remains informed and vigilant. And it's our prayer that this compels YouTube to re-monetize Next News Network and any other of the conservative channels that were monetized for years until truth became treason in this empire of lies. Nikki Chewbacca, 
comments? <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, it doesn't come as any surprise that they've been doing this. We sure. know that they've been doing this for a while. It's just, it's not, it's great that um, there is teeth to all of this and it's beginning to pick up steam. I think that more than the integrity of our elections is at stake, right? This, Because this, this is more than just about the elections. This they are using these search engines and these social media platforms to, as part of an uh, of an a- approach to to reshape our culture, to reshape Correct. how people think, um, and they're they're using all their algorithms to influence us, um, and I think it's it's dangerous. It's super dangerous, and it's it's not just dangerous. It also is part of what is undermining our democracy, right? When when you have a tech giant uh, that is basically unfettered and seems to have unfettered power to do whatever it wants um, in influencing how Americans think and shaping how Americans think using their own personal biases, wow. I mean, that's dark. That's 1984. Right. <laughs> right. When these these standards also are not apparent and clear in the community use standards, right? Yep. Like no hate speech, no bullying, also nothing that we agree with politically. <laughs> but I recently was watching a clip from an interesting podcast called Leaving the Left for Liberty. And she was making the interesting point that she was re chronicling all of the things that Google and YouTube have suppressed. For example, the lab leak theory that the COVID virus actually originated from a lab in Wuhan, China. And for the longest time, that was a taboo thing to say on social media. And if you said that on YouTube or you said that on one of the social media platforms, your posts were taken down, your channel was demonetized, you were blacklisted because that was considered something absolutely fabricated and misinformation And she said, now that's considered widely corroborated information. That's a fact. We know that the COVID virus came from the Wuhan lab. And so here we actually have, she cited several, but proven examples where they punished Americans, demonetized them, which means killing, in many cases, people's jobs and livelihoods. Businesses, during during a a crisis that was already killing other businesses. During a public health crisis where people needed critical information because they were pushing an agenda of information and suppressing free speech that actually turned out to be true. They were the ones perpetuating and peddling the misinformation and disinformation intentionally and dangerously, often in corroboration with the federal government. This is what we're actually talking about. And so the fact that it has taken this Google engineer whistleblower years, half a decade, to get one state legislature to subpoena Google for its recent records. He made the point, I don't know where things are with the machine learning program and the blacklist and everything now, but things are probably updated and changed. We need so many states to jump on this bandwagon. I would love to see the Department of Justice jump on it, but I think that's unlikely under this current administration. But again, November is just around the corner, y'all. And we've got (laughs) such a great opportunity for we the people to do something about it. Here at Stand, we believe in freedom and truth and government by the people. And that's the things that we stand for. So this is another story we wanted to bring you on an issue we can take a stand on. These elections are important. And so is holding big tech accountable. Free thinking is the most important thing that we have and the greatest check on uh, power um, that's out there. That's why the First Amendment is the First Amendment, free speech, right? It's the most important. 